All right, we are live in and my Patreon. And we're live. <laughs> and we're live. There we go. All right, I'm actually going to pop out the chat real quick. Booyah, so I can see what the hell's going on. And move that over there. And go over here. Press that over there. Look at that over there. <laughs> oh, man. I am so ass backwards. There we go. Okay. So, no, man. I actually feel like Cliff High now, how he'd like actually go live. Then for like a minute, he's like, motherfucker. Fucker. <laughs> I know for a tech guru, yeah. he, he always screws up his life. <laughs> I know it was all he's like you'd you could almost rely on him having bad sound or something. <laughs> you hey, know, he, he's not he's not exactly uh, he wouldn't call himself a media personality. He's he's more on the uh, back end software side. Oh yeah, he, he uh he can write the code for the software, but just like just, cluster fuck the whole software up when he's trying to use it. I, I miss him. He hasn't he hasn't been out um, talking much. He's kind of taking a breather. And although I get emails from him, I just got one on. Um, are we live? Hey, it's Big yeah, Square yeah, Ruta. Big Square Ruta. We're live. Yeah, it's uh. He, there's a way using this software that we can actually go live on your Patreon and also mine at exactly the same time. We'll have to do like an education, you know, ed, educating Vix <laughs> on how, how to use StreamYard. So everybody, welcome to the show. Uh, this stranger right here, because he's lost so much weight and looking so damn good, is Big Swinger. Dude, I put on so much since I've been on lockdown. I feel like I'm gonna pop. Really? Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, after those cleanse things, I get down like I lose 20 pounds, and then all of a sudden, you know, I, as soon as you go off the cleanse, you're you're right back to where you were if you don't watch what you eat and drink, and if you don't watch how much fun you're having. How's that? Oh, absolutely. I. Uh, luckily for me, I don't worry about gaining weight because I have been fighting, uh, uh, an eating disorder. I'm actually an anorexic. I'm just really bad at it. <laughs> you're, you're the reverse of anorexic. <laughs> yeah. I'm a prax. I identify as an anorexic. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's classic. But, hey, Ben, I mean, yes, we haven't spoken in so long. And although, you know, I see you every day when I watch your videos, although I put them on double speed. So, <laughs> and then I have to sometimes I'll say, oh, I got to go back and listen to that thing regular speed because that was a really deep comment he made. So it's nice to talk to you at normal speed. And hey, it's always nice talking to you. You've you've been uh, on like your Patreon channel and uh, and on Road to Ruta .com have been putting out the content, and I mean, you're you're crushing it with your your accuracy, and I think. What makes you so unique is that you come from the world that you, you are fighting. And oh, so yeah. you know what they're going to do. You're like, hey, I see it. It's right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, the Baker stuff, it, I mean, it's like second nature to me. And But, but that's the thing when you're communicating these ideas and uh, explaining how the repo market works, explaining – uh, what they're doing with mortgage-backed securities in the derivative market. i That's the language I've been talking for 30 years. And when I, I was talking to Paige, my daughter, and she's like, we need to dumb this down, not dumb it down, just change the language so that 
everybody knows what the hell you're talking about. So she's actually now working for Road to Ruta to basically translate what I say into like real person language. <laughs> and she's going to be doing videos and stuff. And I'm so excited. And she's, she's pumped. So we're going to roll that out in the next couple of weeks. That's a, she is amazing. I mean, that gal is amazing. And it, it, and I, I think it's perfect because she can communicate to her generation where they look at us and go, Hey, a bunch of old gray haired men. What the hell do they know? Those of us you who know. had hair are great, right? <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. I got a haircut yesterday. Oh, I need one. I, I look which, at it. which one do you want cut, Ben? Just the ones on the top. <laughs> I, I, this is long for me. Mm -hmm. I don't like. Uh, plus, it's like getting in my eyes. And, <laughs> I miss you, Ben. God, I miss being on the road so much. Those We were really kicking it into high gear. We were ready to go in the RV caravan all summer preaching cryptocurrencies. And maybe that's why they did this, this PSYOP on us is so that Bix and Ben don't hit the road together and spread the word of freedom. Absolutely. Hell yeah. That's why all the, that's why the Corona came out. <laughs> Everything. They're trying to stop the Bix and Ben show. Absolutely. Yeah. And we are definitely going to crank that back up though. I know that, uh, I know you aren't a quitter. I'm not a quitter. You know, uh, we got so much going on, which I want to jump in, j j jump into with you because uh, I think more and more people need to hear what you're saying out there. And, and, and please, if you're watching this on my channel, please join Bix's Patreon. But if you want an encyclopedia of the last almost 20 years of craziness, join Road to Ruta and use the search bar. <laughs> oh, yeah. Put in anything, and I guarantee Bix has talked about it. I, I looked it up the other day. I looked up the word uh, or the phrase silver manipulation. There's like over a thousand pages of content that I put out on silver manipulation. And and literally, the, the manipulation of silver is the number one thing that the banks are worried about. But they, they gave us a little clue just recently, and I haven't talked about this on my regular channel, so I'll talk about it now. Ted Butler is, a, I mean, he's been fighting the silver manipulation fight since the early 1980s. And, and he, he really constrains himself because he only uses the data that comes out of the, uh, the CME, which is the COMEX. And the, well, actually, it's not the COMEX. It's the uh, ICE, the Intercontinental Exchange, that owns everything. But he only uses their data. And the data coming out of the CFTC, which is the regulator, and he's been nailing the manipulation for so long, but there's something he said last week, which is really important. And it, it at first you think it's a bad thing. And that's that JP Morgan has started to uh, take its physical silver. They have over a billion ounces of physical silver and they're now leasing it into the market so that the, the, the One people are... Quick question. Yeah. Did you say ICE yeah. uh, now holds all of the derivatives? No, 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 no. Okay. No. The, the derivatives theoretically are held at the DTCC. Gotcha. That's, so, but, that, that's what I thought. I just wanted to make yeah. sure. Ice, I'm like, wait. Yeah. <laughs> Squirrel. ICE yeah. owns the COMEX and the the CME. So, and they own BACT, and we've talked about that many times. But but the cool thing for silver lovers that, that a lot of people were emailing me said, oh, my God, you see what Ted Butler said that, JP Morgan is now leasing its silver like like they did back in the early 2000s. Back in the early 2000s, Robert Rubin, Alan Greenspan, Jeffrey Christian, um, Larry Summers went around to all the central banks and said, hey, let us borrow the gold that's sitting in your vault. It's not doing anything. We'll give you a little bit of money as, as a lease rate to rent your gold so they can sell the physical gold into the market and continue to suppress the price. 
Well, after, and, and they use that and hedge it with the mining companies saying, no, these are all legitimate because they're hedges of future production from the mining companies. Well, that's a short term game. And, and we had uh, billions of dollars in losses from whoever held that hedge back in the mid 2000s. Barrick Mining was one of the big uh, people that took it. Now, Barrick Mining was set up by the deep state long ago to launder the gold out of the Philippines, Yamashita's gold. But all that aside, the, the leasing of silver and gold had pretty much ended for the last you know, eight to 10 years because people lost so much money. As of two months ago, JP Morgan is back at the game because they took so much physical gold and so much physical silver off the market. They're sitting with over a billion ounces of physical silver that they've started to lease back into the market to keep the price down. It's like a, it's a, it's like a naked short that they don't have to tell anybody about. And everybody's, oh, no, here they go again. We're going to spend another 10 years waiting for this thing to blow. And what I see is what it does, it tells us exactly how much silver, physical silver, is left in the market to be bought. Because if J.P. Morgan has a billion ounces of physical silver, which today is, what, uh, you know, $18 billion, that's the end of the silver. If they had to go in and lease, start leasing into the market, there is no other supply of silver. Mexico has stopped exporting oh. silver. South America has stopped exporting silver. So all we got to do is get someone with $18 billion, go over to JP Morgan and say, I'll lease all your silver. And that, that very last ounce that they lease, there will be no more silver left in the world to be put into the market to destroy the price. And voila, you got your silver price explosion. Wow. Well, if there's anyone breaking news, breaking show, news. If there's anyone watching this show who has eighteen billion dollars we can borrow, uh we'll we'll pay it back as soon as the price is released. <laughs> they, they won't need the money. If they buy, buy eighteen billion dollars worth of physical silver and end up with you know a billion dollars worth of physical silver in their in their vaults, they will be the richest company on planet Earth, hands down. So Vladimir Putin. All our enemies out there, China, whoever wants to go buy, destroy American financial system, go buy all the physical silver you can because this system is such a fraud. It's embarrassing. Free markets are what, yeah, that's right. Yeah. If we want freedom in America, which is basically getting whittled away really fast, we have to have free markets. And I love Trump to death and I know what he's trying to do. But the continuation of market manipulation is not going to make a great America. It's going to make us weaker and weaker and weaker over time because these countries aren't as stupid as they as they think they are or has, as they have been for the last 100 years. Why wouldn't an enemy of America just go buy up all the silver left on planet Earth? $18 billion is sneezed by these countries. They can print it and go buy as much silver as possible. And that destroys the game because all the silver shorts, which are basically eight banks, will be destroyed. And yeah. they're too big to fail banks, which starts that uh, cataclysm of, of falling banks. And a too big to fail bank means if they fail, the entire system fails. And we cannot have banks that, that one bank goes down, it takes down the whole system. Yeah, I think that everything you just said is going to happen after the election. It's once Trump's got four more years to rebuild the system, he's got no problem with it going down as well, soon. Yeah, but but that's the, the key, is that it only takes $18 billion to throw a gigantic monkey wrench into Trump's plan of delaying this till the end of the year after the election. You know, if, if you take away all the silver off the market, you got a cataclysm for the banking system. Yeah, but I think that Trump's prepared for either because that's how Trump rolls. Trump's like, hey, you know, whatever happens, I'll roll with it because he, he I think his perfect plan, which is why he's, propping up the markets and everything once the election's over because if the markets collapse that that will in the general public that will go against trump 
you know, they'll lay that right at Trump's feet. Now he'll push it off and go the Corona, you know, the shutdown, uh, Antifa. He'll actually point his finger while the mainstream media points their finger, basically what's going on right now. But after the election and once, once the election, I think they're focused on the legality of the election and actually keeping it uh, non-manipulated as much as possible. You need blockchain uh, for that. Oh, absolute. I I still got a guy in Washington, D.C. that's telling me this app is coming out. And it's and apparently he's like he's help he's not helping them code it he's he's advising with the layout of it mm-hmm. you know i think they're using like nsa coders or what who whoever writes the code for the federal government it shouldn't and, be i mean with with the blockchain it shouldn't be that hard to do to figure out how to how to uh, make the election process sound with an open source blockchain that you can you can reference anybody in their world can reference was my vote counted was this my vote here's my here's my transaction number of my vote and there's me and so i mean it shouldn't be that hard to code you don't need a rocket scientist for this but hey if you got a a, a stable of rocket scientists at the NSA and that's all they do might as well have the best of the best you know, figure something out that is uh, uncrackable type of thing. Yeah, apparently, uh, and this is this is what makes Trump a freaking genius, or the American First group, who's actually, actually you know, behind the him. good guys behind him. The good guys, as you would say, is uh, is they're actually going to tie this app to receiving direct payments. Of these, like, uh, you know, out money and all that. right, like relief, like, hey, we have this federal app that you can download off the app store and, uh, and receive your payment instantly that you can shop with instantly. We basically airdrop USD into your, your new wallet and the wallet private address is actually part of the new ID program where they take your social security number and they add another group of numbers that's hashed into your private wallet number. So that's how they're going to roll it. This is how it was explained to me. That that would be a, a beautiful, efficient, practical, and, and the biggest word I'm going to use is open yes it's open and you can go onto the blockchain and confirm that your vote was counted a- appropriately and that and that there wasn't uh, any monkey business going on yep and and literally like you'll put your information into this app and it will generate your private id and as you live your life and you go for like a I don't know, like a car loan or a home loan or whatever. What, or you're like going to the doctor, you give them your public ad- address, your social security number. But as long as you and then only you hold your private key, no one can steal your identity. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's, that's a beautiful way to do it. Oh yeah, and, and from what I hear, that's what they're creating. That is this like new uh, American ID app that's actually being created. So you heard freedom, it first freedom is here. around the corner, damn it! Yeah, it, it's uh, <clears throat> it's it. We all know it's going this way. We all know it's going blockchain. If blockchain wasn't real and blockchain wasn't efficient and blockchain wasn't the future, it would have already died. I had the 
Pet Rock was popular for about a year and a half until somebody realized it was a fucking rock. And Crypto Kitties. <laughs> and and you, you can go down the list. But uh, according to the mainstream media, Bitcoin has died, what, 115 times, 120 times that they've said, oh, Bitcoin's dead. What a crazy idea. Oh, my God. I got so every time I heard that, I knew there was another pump of Bitcoin going to happen. <laughs> I, I do want to talk to you <clears throat> about one thing that I think you're doing that's awesome, and that's helping people get into new lines of businesses that are included in the blockchain. Whether or not I believe in some of the stuff that you believe, it doesn't really matter. People are going to have to get multiple income streams going, no matter how big or how small, because as as we can see from this company shutdown, the government currently has the power to destroy what you've worked for your whole life. And there are people within government that that is exactly what they're trying to do. Take the middle class, turn everybody into the lower class, and then you control them through voting. Everybody votes for stuff. And that's the George Soros paid for and, you know, the people above him. That's the the deep bad guys that uh, our friend Dick Allgaier talks about. The the reality of that is that they're very good at that. They're very good at destroying things. It's easier to destroy something than to build something up. So what, what you're doing, and I need to get onto it more, is showing people, hey, there's different avenues. You don't have to go through the traditional, I went to four years of college, four years of this, eight years of this. I have my certificate, my, pe my piece of paper as a, uh, Jeff Berwick calls it your indoctrination uh, slip. That's not the future. The future is not about that. The future is about building things organically and, and decentralized that aren't involved with the government. A friend of mine is is consulting companies. How do you how do you run a company on a decentralized type of organization? And I'm going to do an interview with him soon, and he's just. He's just, he's nailing it. And it's yeah. because it's the wave of the future. We have to, we can't rely on government anymore. Yes, we're going to have to rely on government giving everybody a handout as this thing falls apart. I have no problem with that. I do know a lot of people are absolutely hurting because they bought into the old system and now the old system is being destroyed and they're getting laid off. They're not getting their pension payments. They're not, you know, imagine you're, you're uh, 65 years old and you finally, you worked your whole life, you built your business or whatever you did, and you're ready to enjoy retirement. And all of a sudden, everything gets destroyed. How, how do those people start up from the beginning? They can't. So I do believe that there will be a role for the controllers, current controllers of our money to reallocate money after the crash. That's why I always just prayed for the, the quick Band-Aid release, because that would require government to do it instantaneously for everybody because everybody would have lost everything that's in the banking system but it looks like it, it, they're more going towards the bitcoin bin path of you know we're going to take five or ten years to transition over but there are people dying in those five or ten years that didn't really have to go through what they had to go through it's one of those things do you rip the band-aid off and fix the problem instantaneously Obviously, that that has its own amount of death and destruction too. Or do you, you know, delay this thing out with market manipulation, which is what you know Trump and Mnuchin are real good at these days, is manipulating all markets to keep things under control. I I I have always voted for let's rip the bandaid because I've been on this way too long, and I know ultimately that's what's going to happen in the end is that people need to who who is that who is it over there. That's my daughter, Alexa. She... Hello, darling. Am I still singing at your wedding? <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, happy Absolutely. graduation. Happy graduation. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, we were there last night, and this they basically had it set up like a drive-in where, like, all the parents were in cars. Okay. Nobody paid attention to the six. The, it, it, it was a joke i mean nobody was you know six feet apart uh, hardly anyone had on mask how the hell are you gonna drink beer through a mask and i'm sure well, she could figure out a way oh yeah oh she did she judging by the way she looks this morning <laughs> she, 
she tore it up last night. <laughs> well, good. You need that. When you're a high school graduate, are you kidding? That's the time of your life. Yeah, no. Well, apparently she had it last night because she she looks like somebody drug her down the fucking <laughs> down to her room and threw her in the bed and was just like, sleep till you wake up. <laughs> <laughs> well, many congratulations uh, to the family. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I actually want to hook you up with Ivan on tech. I like Ivan. Um, yeah, he has a he has a great education program, and he's uh, he's actually like partnering with universities and like and where average people can actually take like online classes and 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 learn how to program smart contracts and like the way of the future and uh I'll and I'll actually give you his email his personal email address because oh. it's 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 I no no matter your age you're going to have to educate yourself and if you want opportunity it, if if you're 20 years old and you learn blockchain programming now or or even just understand the the concepts because there's also there's a besides the programming there's inf all kinds of infrastructure you need to know um, that that the crypto companies are going to need even such things as like HR for a crypto startup and things like that um if you if you're familiar with cryptocurrency, the the, hi, the people hiring that's one of the first things they're going to ask is uh, how familiar are you with uh, the Bitcoin blockchain? And if you know what you're talking about, at least to a certain extent, they're going to go, "Oh my God, the last hundred uh, 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 people who applied for this position didn't even know what the blockchain was." I mean, it's it's yeah. It, now is the time to to learn all that stuff. A perfect example is Hodlet. They are, uh, they're actually going to be h hiring like in house uh, help. You know, uh, uh, if you have a problem with the app or you need like whatever, that's all going to be based here in America. And they, they're going to love having like, people that actually know about Bitcoin and blockchain running and actually communicating with the people on Hodlet. And Hodlet is, uh, as this app rolls out, is right now, they uh, you cannot remove your coins right now, but how, how this is going to lay out is you're going to actually, like, put your private key from your Exodus wallet into Hodlet. And it it will basically be like you order groceries at Walmart where you place your order on Hodlet and they ship you your coins to your private key. Hey, I, I am looking at my Hodlet wallet right now. I have been using the Hodlet wallet. I wanted to get, you know, the the ins and outs of it and use it for a while before I really promoted it on my channel. And so far I'm loving it. I am absolutely loving it. I, I love that you can you can set it up, you, you link it to your bank account. And I love that the, they round up and change and you can pick which coins you want to invest in and things like that. But also I love that you can do a like a weekly here, you know, Coinbase has it too, but take uh, 20 bucks and buy Litecoin every Friday of, of the year. You know, you got 52 Fridays and you're you're getting, I, I love getting the little email message. Your Hodlet wallet has just bought X amount of uh, yeah. Litecoin. So yes, um, I'm gonna do a whole show on that at some point. I, I wanna make sure it's everything's all rolled out. Obviously it'll change over the years, but right now I'm saying like two thumbs up for the Hodlet wallet. Yeah, and um, w this is why I've all, I've been waiting for two two and a half years for Hodlet because they want they wanted to to actually make the infrastructure stupid secure, mm -hmm. like it is it makes 
Coinbase and security look like a joke. And the reason Hodlet is different than Coinbase and Kraken and all these others, it's it's a one-for-one one exchange. It's why you have to load money onto your Hodlet and then you purchase mm-hmm. because it there's no float. There's no, ah, you know yeah. what? You bought Here's your account. Dollars. It's in there. <laughs> right. It's, it's, it's literally, they'll have an, a monthly audit of Hodlet outside company audit them and go, here's our client ledger. Here's our blockchain ledger. They match up. Mm-hmm. So, when when the app is upgraded and you are are able to shoot those over to your Exodus wallet or whatever wallet, when you purchase, that's actually real blockchain volume. Are they now? When when would does it happen that they uh, implement the feature of you can move your um, coins to? your own hardware wallet or whatever. Uh, I am in the process of introducing them to the uh, leadership at the Exodus wallet Mm -hmm. and Exodus and Hodlet are going to hopefully let the lawyers talk it out, (laughs) um, have a partnership where Hodlet, Hodlet will be the on the fiat on ramp for Exodus, and that um, um, Exodus will help Hodlet integrate that direct wiring or wiring sending of cryptos from the Hodlet app. So Hodlet won't even hold your coins unless you want them to. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you'll actually make your purchase. You'll have your pri- or your public address of whatever coin already loaded in Hodlet, where every time you actually make like a weekly buy, it doesn't even go into Hodlet system. It goes right to your Exodus wallet or whatever wallet. Your, oh, whatever it, public address you want it to go to. Right. Hotlet wants to be everyone's go-to platform. Number one, they charge less than Coinbase. Far less. Coinbase is, is, oh my God, they charge so much. Because people, I mean, and and you can even tell, like, you want to buy cryptos? And it it doesn't tell you really how much, you just click buy. And I mean, if you read down, you can find out how much. But It's like, whoa, that's, uh, yeah. I, yeah, they make uh, a hell of a lot of money, and and it's truthfully, I love Coinbase for one reason: is that the newbies find it very easy to to sign up and get going with cryptos. They've made that process pretty damn easy, and a lot of banks accept um, Coinbase. Mm-hmm. So, it, yeah, Coinbase has a head start, but uh, people are doing it better behind them, and and gonna hopefully overtake them at some point. Oh, Ed, I promise you, in two or three years, Hodlet is going to just kill it. They're, they're going to be the beast. They're going to be the killer app. Where, because Hodlet doesn't just have plans for you know, buying cryptos, they're future plans of a usage called hodl pay which is a whole nother level that people haven't even the things that are coming with hodlet are 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 literally revolutionary in not just the cryptocurrency world but how you get loans how you earn interest how how you can apply for a loan in your app and then 
use a card that's linked to it that actually pays off your loan using a proof of stake coin that actually pays your loan for you. It's it it's revolutionary on on what is actually coming. Cool. I'm I'm really excited about that. Hey, I got a uh, I got an email from Cliff just this morning. Oh yeah, yeah. I was thinking we could talk about it and, and kind of uh, shift our focus towards what the hell has happened this year. How did we get in this mess? Um, because Cliff, remember back the, the Cliff interview I did back in September where he was talking about year zero. Everything changes from the beginning of the year. And then we had a couple other interviews and one he's just broke down. People say, well, you know, this 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 virus thing isn't turning out as bad as Cliff said it would. I would, I would say personally, it's turning out worse than Cliff said it would because remember, Cliff reads future language. What is the language about the virus today? Everybody and their mother. If if you saw this language without being, you know, experiencing what we're experiencing with, with very low fatality rates in the U.S., like non-existent type of, you know, they're there, but they're just not even real. What would that language look like if you were looking at it back last year and you saw this massive growth of language just blowing up for three years he had this thing i mean he's been looking at this data it's called ill winds in his data for the last 30 years and or 25 years and this was the big thing you can see i mean it's on every paper what in what world would everybody agree to shut down their business stop everything they're doing and hide in their house that's the kind of stuff he was seeing in his data Yep. And now we're living it and we're saying, wait a minute, there's other things going on that is not making the news. And that is the fatality rate is not if you're high in vitamin D, you're pretty much immune to this thing. And, you know, it's like, why in the summers do viruses go away and come back in the winter? It's all about vitamin D because you get vitamin D from the sunshine. Why not just go right to the people and say, hey, Load up on vitamin D, load up on vitamin C, load up on chaga, load up on things that will make you immune or close to immune from this. Exactly. Exactly. So here's, let me read you what Cliff wrote. I think I can read this. He usually says, don't read, don't talk about this to anybody on the secret stuff. But um, because he, he was, I was yesterday talking about restaurants and bars, how there's no hope for them in the future and get out of that industry, find a new industry. He says, you're wrong about the restaurant and bars. Restaurants and other gathering places are going to go big this year and beyond because it's a place to gather for people to talk, just like how the American Revolution started. It started in the bars and restaurants. That's where people got together and talked, and that's where they built consensus without the government, without the media and all that. So I, truthfully, I know the restaurant business better than, than Cliff, I, I assume, because I eat, drink, and my family's in it. Most restaurants can't last more than a month or two without full-on income coming in, and they're just not going to survive. It might be new restaurants that pop up in the future, but the ones that are going on right now, most of them will be gone, I believe. Anyway, so here's what he says. Really interesting stuff about COVID. Um, He says, it was an op. It is a bioweapon. It is deadly against anyone with low vitamin C and D. It is killing old people and dark-skinned people. No one else is even getting the sniffles from it. 2021-2022 likely will be the lowest average overall monthly mortality rates in the last decades, taking only disease into account. And then he goes, we will have an explosion of anti-government and anti-lockdown language release. Unlike 1920, when it took two years, this time is going to be very much more rapid. They, meaning you know, T-H-E-Y in capitals, uh, what they did was they, they're trying to take out the weak. They knew it would hit the Chinese hard and start a global panic as we could not tell what criteria initially were involved. Thus, the panic and confusion at the beginning. And justifiably so, if you are low in vitamin D or vitamin C, like the, most of the Chinese, Iranians, and Pakistanis, um, it is a huge problem. And there's what he said about, you know, so we had the COVID thing in the beginning of the year. Now it's on to Antifa and riots and all that. And he said the Antifa insurrection 
is not sustainable at current levels. They will burn out in less than two months at this rate of activity. Only thing that could alter this is letting colleges reopen as recruiting points. But they would have to acknowledge that coronavirus is not a problem, which brings up, was it ever, type of questions. Plus, many parents are now unemployed and loans shot to hell as banks collapse, so it starts to become really difficult to see a sustainable system for our old-style colleges. The world is evolving. That was Cliff's, Cliff's email to me. I mean, this stuff just is what it popped in his head. He's stuck it in an email. There's not, no official announcements there. All right. But, but it makes sense. Cliff, get back with your buddy Bix and do another like three hour video. There, I, those are amazing. I there's like um there's two sections. One where Amy and I went out to Washington to hang out with Cliff for a couple days. That was amazing. Oh my god. I remember doing the interview and it, we were in an Airbnb and you, you've seen it had the blue background. It was I mean Cliff lives on the beach, literally. It's not like a Southern California type of beach where there's a bunch of bikinis. If you saw my video in the rain in the wind. Oh, that was, <laughs> I thought it was going to blow you away. I thought I'd see Bix just like going down the. That was a crazy. Beach. Yeah. It's not, it's not a sunny beach. It's, it's beautiful. I like the cold weather anyway. Washington has, has these beaches. But if, if, you, when we went up there and Amy was, you know, he, Amy used to tease me because she'd tell me all these things about health that I'd just kind of blow off. But as soon as Cliff High said it, I'd end up doing it. She's like, I told you that six months ago. So she, she didn't know much about Cliff High. And then we go up there and meet him. And she's like, oh, my God, this guy is so awesome. So we're doing the interview. And right behind the wall there, Amy's sitting there the whole four hours with her ear against the wall. It was hysterical. Um, but, yeah, there's there's those are on the free side of the Road to Ruta website. Go check those yeah. out. Um, the ones we did recently are on the, I think they're still on the paid side. I'll move them to the free side. So go to roadtoruta.com and right below the video, we have a new website, by the way, right before the video, I'm going to post all the cliff high, um, videos. And there's a whole hours and hours of, he explains what's going on right now. Although with, with the coronavirus thing, he got the language, right? Obviously it is the number one thing that has been permeating, but Obviously, there's other agendas going on. So check out the videos. Um, Cliff's kind of in hiding, right? Not in hiding. He's just he's tired of the bullshit. He wants he's a hermit. He wants to be alone for a while. But I'll, we'll get together again soon. And um, I'm just happy to hear every time I see a Cliff email. I'm like, cool that the deep deep state hasn't come grabbed him yet. Yeah, and and please check out if you're watching this on my channel. Ch check out Road to Rude. Road to Ruda dot com, and if uh, uh, if you're on Patreon, check out Big Swear on Patreon, and uh, if uh, my show, if you're watching this on Bix's, uh, what I'm doing on Patreon now is I'm basically laying out the history of how we got here. And I'm tying in the progressive movement. I'm tying in the Nazis. I'm tying in uh, uh, the communists and everything. Where I'm giving you the history that everyone knows. Where when your friends are like, what's going on? You can actually explain where Antifa came from what the idea of Antifa is, who's running Antifa, and how it actually ties in with the Muslim Brotherhood and the hacking of the Hillary emails. Uma Abedin's mother was the head of the Mus Muslim Sisterhood. Exactly. So if you're watching me on Bix's channel, come check out my Patreon because in... And if you're only five bucks... Yeah, I've, that's I'm so a ridiculous. <laughs> you got to bump your price, Ben. You're worth a hell of a no, lot. No, 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 no. It, it, it's only five bucks a month, and I do a daily show. And it's uh, it's it's literally the reason we've moved over to Patreon is 
I can only do like a half hour show on regular YouTube and I have to self censor myself so much that I can't accurately inform and Patreon allows us to actually be able to unlist our YouTube videos where they there aren't any ads or anything running. So the algorithms ignore those videos mostly because they aren't we aren't trying to reach the public, you know, like the Great Awakening. But we're also trying to inform because those people may not know. And please, if you're watching this on Bick's Patreon channel, share his Patreon link to your friends. Go look. You want to Netflix and chill? No, no, no. You need to net Bix and chill. <laughs> All right. I, I, I agree. I mean, I love it that that Patreon, you know, Patreon does have some censorship, but, but it's a hell of a lot less stringent than um, YouTube's. And YouTube's has a huge agenda going along with it. So, um, yeah, everything's going out, trying to get out of um, YouTube. Although I think, I mean, obviously YouTube is the biggest platform of its kind. It is a huge place to, you will never get the kind of viewership um, outside of YouTube at the moment. So that's why I'm a big advocate of let's not change what works really well. Let's take out the management or remove their ability, remove their ability to censor according to their ideological preferences or, or whatever it is that they use as criteria. That is not free speech. And people who tell me that YouTube, well, YouTube's a, a, a private corporation, you know, they can do whatever they want. I say no. It was funded by the U.S. Uh, deep state, 100%. It was DARPA. It was, it was DARPA. Well, but even, well, that was Google. Was yeah. DARPA. The YouTube was actually patented in 1999 by a guy named Mark Collins Rector. Mark Collins Rector worked for the deep state pedos. And that's how YouTube got its origination as a pedophilia website. Hey, and, wa watch what you say. They'll send you another letter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that, that's a, I, I'm a, you know, Mark Collins Rector hasn't sued me. He's spent plenty of time in jail for being a pedophile. And in, in 1999, him and his roommate, a guy named Chad Shackley and another guy, actually submitted the exact patent for YouTube. And then we hear that in 2006, these three guys invented YouTube over a dinner party while they were watching the Super Bowl. That is not what happened. That's a lie. So no, YouTube is not a a, a non uh, non government entity. Our taxpayers paid for YouTube. The deep state had control of yep. YouTube and Google and Facebook. Absolutely. So they cannot claim that they're you know that we're a private company and we don't have to do what the government has to do. No, without the government, these companies would not be in business. So that's my argument for is should YouTube be a a public square where anything can be said. Yep. All right, everyone. Thank you for watching the show. Unfortunately, I got some running around. <laughs> Damn kids. <laughs> uh, everyone, check out Bix on road to dot com and in Patreon. And I love you like always. Say hi to Amy and the family. Right back and, at uh, you. We will be getting back together. Love you guys. Everyone have a great day. And we will see you on the flip side.